Exercise five, uh, give the systematic name for each of the following compounds. What we're gonna see here is a mixture of metals that form uh, one cation, one charge, and metals that form more than one cation. So, as we get started with A here, this is cobalt. Cobalt is a transition metal, and it's not one of those um, exceptions like cadmium, zinc, and silver that only form one cation, even though it's they're truly transition metals. This is cobalt, so it forms at least two. So I'm going to have to use the Roman numeral system, the stock system here. So this is bromine. Bromides have a minus one charge. There are two of them, so that's a minus two. It means the cobalt has to provide a plus two. There's only one atom to do so. So that's going to be, I'll just, there you go, cobalt to bromide. B, this is calcium. Calcium is a representative metal, right? It's in the main group. It's in an A group. And so it's going to form a plus two always, right? There, there's no different charge on calcium. And so we just write calcium chloride, no Roman numeral. C, aluminum, again, representative element. It's 3A, right? 3A. And so there's going to be no multiple valence states here. It's always going to form plus 3. So I don't have to tell you what charge it is. So I simply write aluminum oxide. <clears throat> when I get uh, over here to D, I see this is chromium. And chromium, yes, it's a transition metal. And it's not one of the heavy metal bad boys that only form one charge, just to throw you off. right? It's not zinc, cadmium, or silver. And so it's going to need a Roman numeral. How do I know it's a 3, however? Because chloride is always a minus 1 because it's a representative element. There are three of them, so it's a total of minus three, and so there must be balance using a plus three. There's only one atom of chromium to do that, so it must be chromium three, and then a little formatting magic down there, so chromium three chloride. 